All right, I got Matthew West. Uh, how's it going today? It's going great. Good to talk to you, man. Yeah, it's good to sit down with you, too. I've had a chance to catch you live a couple of times. I've uh, been wanting to have a chance to sit down with you for a couple of years now, so this is exciting. Well, thank you. This is exciting for me. Well, thanks uh, for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. You're on Winter Jam 2013. Uh, this is not the first time you played Winter Jam. You played, I believe, back in 05. Um, how's it going this year? Oh, man, we're having a blast. It's going great. Winter Jam... 2013 is um, it seems bigger than ever, and uh, an amazing lineup of artists. And I'm just I'm I can't believe I get to be a part of it. So we're we're having a great time. That is awesome. Well, what what keeps bringing you back? Like like I mentioned, you played it. You've played Winter Jam before. What brings you back? Well, um, you know, you can't really come back unless they invite you. So <laughs> I guess I guess they're bringing me back. But, uh, you know, it's been several, several years since I've done it. And when I first did it, uh, it was at the very, very beginning of my career. So nobody really knew my music at the time. I don't think. They maybe knew one or two songs. And so, um, so it's really a different experience to come back now and be part of the tour in a, in a more in-depth capacity and get to sing a few more songs and uh the crowd maybe knows the songs a little better so we're all having a big sing-along so and you know there's there's just something special about being on a tour with many different artists and uh kind of that camaraderie is is something i really enjoy as well Awesome. Yeah, one thing that I've, oh, I always love is when there's, whether it's a festival or just a normal tour where the bands, they've toured together, they know each other, you know, they, they all get along. There's just something about that atmosphere. Maybe it, it's because it plays off onto the fans and the fans pick up on it. It just makes for a better show and a better tour. I think so. I think, you know, plus, I mean, for the fans to come and hear all different you know, kinds of music and a whole night just, you know, for the family, hopefully for parents, too. They're going, man, there's something for me. There's something for my kids. Um, and, and I really think it's important. You know, when I was growing up, my parents saw the value of Christian music and how maybe it could impact my life and my brother's lives more than maybe just a church service could. You know, at a certain point in your youth, there's, there's only certain things that are going to get through to you and I love seeing all these parents and youth pastors bringing their kids to Winter Jam and and really trusting us with them to to pour into their lives. There's a lot of different things they could be, there's a lot of different kinds of shows that they could be going to see that I wouldn't want my daughter at. And this is one that, that I, I bring my daughters out to sit in the front row and they watch every artist on this tour. That's how proud I am to be a part of Winter Jam. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's... There's just something, because this will be the third year that I've done Winter Jam, and there's just something about, I guess, just the atmosphere and the energy and just something about the way the Winter Jam is just put on by the promoters and the bands. It's It really is a family atmosphere, and it's just really cool to see something like that, especially for, for $10, $10 admission, 10, 15 bands maybe. Um, it's just an awesome thing that they've got going on. It's really cool. Yeah, man. Well, I'm, we're glad that, that everybody enjoys it. And I'll tell you something. We've had the crowds. The crowds on this tour have been... Uh, huge and not only have they been huge crowds but it's been um it's been uh people showing up hours and hours in advance and uh that's been pretty crazy to see um uh, people getting turned away unfortunately but uh but we're having a great time and, and that'll just be a reminder to show up early yeah absolutely I, that's something that i i noticed last year um because I, I started doing it two years ago and i noticed last year that they were even putting on the social media sites that you have to get there a couple hours early if you want to get in and it's really cool to see you know especially christian tour um ranking above all of the other tours that there are and seeing such a high demand for uh for a christian tour it's really refreshing to see i love it 
Uh, no, me too, man. It's it's. I think there's people. People are craving for something positive in their lives, and uh, you know that's that's what we hope to bring to the table is something that can be uh, just an uplifting time for you. And, and even at the beginning of this year, you know, just a great way to start the new year. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, now, tell me about the your latest album, "Live Into the Light," came out back in September. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that album? From what I understand, it has a similar yeah. approach to the story of your life with uh, fan life stories. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that album? Well, you know, to, to really, um, to start with, I would just say that um, this has kind of become what I do. I, I don't know how else to say it, but I love this journey that I've had the honor of, of taking, all because people have chosen to share their story with me um and and they've just they've they've come out of the woodwork and i've received over twenty five thousand stories now in the last three years and so you know when you keep getting these stories it just kind of it kind of decides for you you know uh, what else would i do this is what i'm passionate about uh, telling the stories of people's lives through my songs and sometimes there's going to be seasons where the story that i'm telling is my story sometimes there's going to be seasons where i'm telling someone else's story um but in a way they're all of our stories and so that's what into the light is about it's a, it's another cd of songs inspired by the true stories of people who have chosen to step into the light and uh and say hey this is my story and and a lot of them are saying hey this is my story it ain't all pretty but but god's really done something special in my life he's rescued me from addiction he's restored my marriage uh he he's brought my dad back home you know these different things and different stories people at different places in their lives they're just being openly uh open and honest and uh and I believe that it's really impacting other people's lives, too. <clears throat> wow. Um, so what led you um, a couple albums ago now to uh, to use that approach and to go down that road? Well, um, a few years back, I was watching all of these commercials leading up to uh, the Super Bowl. And I had just recently released a record called Something to Say, and it had the song The Motions on it. And um, the whole message of that album was, you've got something to say, that God, God will speak through your life uniquely. Like, he's got something to say through you that, that nobody else can say quite like you can. <clears throat> At the time, I was thinking, okay, well, what, what do I want to say next to people? What's the next message that's on my heart? Well, I'm watching these Super Bowl commercials, and these products are advertising, hey, you direct the next um, Nissan commercial. You you come up with your idea. We're going to pick one, uh, one person just to, to be the director of the video. Or, or another one said, uh, you get to decide what flavor what the new flavor of Doritos should be or something, you know? And, and it was all these sort of, like, giving people this, like, in-depth involvement to these products. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. How do they do that, you know? Because that seems risky, like, mm-hmm. letting people pick what their favorite flavor of Dorito is and, like, inventing something. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, man, that makes sense because Doritos knows who they're making Doritos for. They want people to make Doritos. They want to make Doritos that people want to eat. Yeah. And so if the fans decide this is a flavor we like, well, that makes sense. And then I thought about that. I thought, well, why do I make music? Who do I make music for? And I began to ask those questions. I thought, well, first and foremost, I make music to glorify God because that he has changed my life. And what I'm doing that for is for people to find hope and encouragement, to hit them where they're at and, and to connect with them at the places in their hearts where they need to be connected with. And so I thought, what better way to do that than to let them tell me what I need to be writing about? And that's what has changed it all for me. <clears throat> wow. Um, so can, can fans still send in stories um, for you to read or use on maybe the next album or albums in the future? Yeah. 
Yeah, we've actually just left it open and available for people to to continue to share their stories with me. And so I um, I get stories every day. And if they go to MatthewWest.com, um, the stories can be seen. Uh, you can, you can, uh, there's a, we actually have created a database that makes it easy for you to submit your story. You put your name down and, and just write about, you know, some people just want to do it anonymously too, mm-hmm. you know, but they just need to get something off of their chest and whatever this can serve, um, however this can help people, um, that's, that's what we want to do. And so that's, the, that's what we're doing. We're, we just continue to collect stories. That's why I kind of just say like, this is just what I do now. And I love having this dialogue with people as they share with their story, uh, share their stories with me. That is really cool. Have you ever had a chance to actually meet one of the fans or somebody that's submitted a story to you? Oh man, I've had the chance to meet all of them. We, uh, we flew every single person who's inspired a song on my last two records came to Nashville for a weekend to hang out. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> they came to Nashville and hung out with me for a whole weekend and they got to hear their song in person. And we just we just had lunch and breakfast and dinner together and did a special concert for them all and we presented them each with their own number one plaque. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome! In, in my book, every single one of their stories is a number one. So um, it, it's been a really special journey, a chance for me to even go deeper uh, into the lives of people who. You know, a lot of times in our careers, we'll stop short and say, "Okay, well, so and so is a fan." Well these people have become friends and that's mm-hmm. something that I'm really grateful for. Now, speaking of peop- of reaching people um, on a deeper level, uh, the last couple of years of Winter Jam especially have been very interesting where it's featured bands or artists who also have a, a mainstream following. Last year with Skillet and then this year and a couple of years ago with Red, even Toby Mac now has some sort somewhat of a mainstream following. Um, have you ever have you ever thought about the fact that maybe there's some fans that are attending more now than before that maybe aren't believers and maybe how you would minister and reach them? Because it really puts um, the bands and artists in a really interesting position now. Yeah, you know, I I always consider that, and I think what what has led me to be a, more mindful of it is the stories that I've read, because you know, I've gotten I've gotten over twenty five thousand stories, and I've read. I mean, to be honest with you, I've read about some things that I can't even believe, and I can't even repeat, and. The thing that uh, struck me as I've been on this journey of reading stories is, you know, from my career, most of my music is known throughout the contemporary Christian industry. Unlike uh, maybe Skillet or Red, that's just the way my career has gone. Mm -hmm. But even with that said, the people who are writing to me, they only know me because of my Christian music. These stories are coming from inside the walls of the church. Mm-hmm. And yet, one in every five stories has dealt with the subject of sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm reading stories about marriages on the verge of divorce, kids being abused, um, teenagers who are cutting themselves, um, men who are battling uh, pornography addiction. I mean, these are things that I'm reading about every day and I'm going, you know, whether whether someone's coming to my show who's who goes to church or doesn't go to church, that it doesn't matter because we are all broken and messed up and hurting. And a lot of people who might say, yeah, I'm a churchgoer if they were to fill out a survey, well, that doesn't mean they're a Christian. That means that they're going to church because they're hurting and they need to find hope. And so that's what's taught me is that whoever's walking through the doors of these shows, I will never want, uh, no more will I take for granted and think, oh, they're already Christians because, you know, we're on a mission and we're on a mission to point people, um, whether they're lost uh, and need to be found or whether they're found and they need to be kept, that's our mission is to draw people closer to God. Well, it really puts kind of a... I don't want to say new, but really puts more emphasis on the word, on the term ministry, uh, for what for what you do. Because um, instead of now just being a career, it's it's a true strong ministry, um, which is really cool. Well, 
uh, speaking of ministry too, we we've actually started a ministry to um, help help us kind of go deeper into the lives of the people who we're having a chance to have contact with. Because you know, a lot of times we don't. When when I get a story and somebody's saying, "Hey, I'm I'm contemplating suicide," I don't know what to do. Well, you know, this becomes not about me trying to write hit songs anymore. This becomes about something deep, deeper than that. And so we're, we're working right now to build up um, an organization that helps us help them and go deeper into the lives of the people who are writing to me. Because if we're not doing that, then, then we'll, why am I even doing this? You know what I mean? So um, you'll find out some more information about that new ministry as we as we get that launched. It's going to be very exciting. Awesome, man. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. It's been amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. I, I appreciate the kind words and, and for helping us get the word out about about Winter Jam and, uh, and, and about, you know, this new record that I'm really really excited about so people are responding and um and uh you know we can't get the word out without guys like you so thanks for the help thank you i appreciate it all right we'll hope to do it again okay definitely we'll see you in a couple weeks all right see you see you